What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. And, you know, if you were to go back 34 years, right, 34 years ago it was 1989, and that's when uh, the last, what we thought was the last Indiana Jones film came out, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, you know, you would have been excited for an Indiana Jones film. You would have been hype. Everything would have been, oh, man, I can't wait till Indiana Jones come out, man. It's going to be great. You know, the last film to finish off the trilogy, this is going to be amazing. As a matter of fact, the summer of 89 had two films that everybody was hyped for, uh, Indiana Jones and last crusade and batman right the original michael keaton's batman everybody was hyped the summer of 89 oh it's gonna be great man we got batman we got indiana jones this is gonna be awesome okay and then fast forward 34 years later and both of these same cats all right michael keaton and harrison ford showing back up in their respective parts and nobody cares about this crap you saw you saw what happened with the flash okay the flash is just one big gigantic flop i already did a video about that i'll link that one above if you didn't check that one out and now we get into indiana jones and the dial of destiny and you see this article this is on slash film uh how much will indiana jones and the dial of destiny make at the box office not enough yeah it's not going to make anything all right and i think the biggest entertainment story for the year of 2023 is going to be the fall of disney how did this company who had everything who was on top of everything you're talking about it had marvel the marvel cinematic universe it has star wars it has indiana jones lucasfilm as a whole it has pixar you're talking about three of the biggest entertainment studios entertainment brands anywhere in history maybe and Disney owns those. Disney also owns ESPN. Disney owns the Disney Channel and, you know, Disney Plus. They own all of these various affiliates. Don't forget the parks either, okay? They got all of these different ways, okay? They got a million ways to get it, right? Disney is out here. They making bread like Pillsbury, baby. They got it going on. How did they fall apart like this? And the reason is, is because, guess what? They forgot their audience. They don't know anything about the people that are actually coming and showing up to watch films in 2023. They're still wait, making movies like these are being made in the 80s. We got we got the same audience coming to watch this stuff. Okay, they, they're so out of date. They're so behind the times. Why do you think that an Indiana Jones film, this with 80 year old Harrison Ford, is going to be something that's going to catch with a lot of people? I'm not saying it's not going to have some buzz. There will be people that will go to check it out just purely out of nostalgia. But, I mean, you want to get the 18 to 35 demographic. But there's been one film in the past 35 years, and it was 15 years ago. It's too little, too late, Disney. You should have kept this thing refreshed. You should have had a young Indiana Jones adventure television show, and you follow him all the way through. Maybe he gets a little bit older, and then you drop him in to, a you know, his own series with the recast Indiana Jones. Not old man indie. Nobody cares about old man indie. This thing is going to flop. It's just pure nostalgia bait. That's all they're giving us. And yeah, so the box office is looking pretty dismal as we're going to get into. Let's go ahead and check it out. Virtually ever since Disney purchased Lucasfilm for more than $4 billion in 2012, they've been trying to get Harrison Ford back for one more go around as Indiana Jones. It took a whole lot longer than anyone expected, but Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is set to hit theaters at the end of June as one of the summer's biggest blockbusters. The question is, will it send the cinematic icon out on a high note? Uh, early box office tracking suggests that won't be the case. And frankly, even in a best case scenario right now, the movie won't make nearly enough to turn it into a hit. The latest estimates from Box Office Pro have the fifth Indiana Jones movie taking in anywhere from 68 to 102 million on its opening weekend. So I want y'all to think about this. 68 to 102 million. Now, I've already said that if it's a $200 million budget, let's just say $200 million. You need to at least at the bare minimum get to about a hundred million dollars domestically on your opening weekend. If you don't get that, it's a wrap. You're not going to make your money back. You don't have a chance. Now it says here that, yeah, they expect Indiana Jones realistically to do about 60 to 70 million dollars. That's bad news. That means that this thing at a 200 million dollar budget wouldn't make any money. But hold on. I got something to come with that. All right. And it goes on to say, yeah, that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull opened to $100 million en route to $790 million worldwide 15 years ago. So 15 years ago, this is a film that did $790 million back when ticket prices was way cheaper than they are now. All right. Just keep all of this in mind. And of course, it says Disney is certainly hoping for a number closer to the high end of those projections. And then it goes on to say, yeah, this is the first time that Steven Spielberg hasn't been in the director's chair for an Indiana Jones movie. And that's no small thing. Yeah, because the question is, will this even feel like an Indiana Jones film? You know, if Spielberg isn't the one directing it. 
you know, every director has a different take, a different eye. Spielberg certainly would direct the film differently than James Mangold. So will this have the feel of Indiana Jones from Spielberg? Or is this just going to be James Mangold just kind of copying off of Spielberg and trying to imitate or emulate Spielberg as close as possible? Is he really going to get there? Who knows, okay? So that's one thing that I think is probably working against this. But it says right here, but mixed reviews aren't the big issue here. It's the film's inexcusably large budget. All right, so yeah, here we go. India is in big trouble. As was reported several months back, Dial of Destiny carries an eye-melting $300 million budget. $300 million. Okay, $300 million. So I want y'all to remember, I said you need at least $100 million on your opening weekend domestically if your budget is $200 million. With $300 million, you're going to need somewhere in the neighborhood of $150 million opening weekend just to have a chance. And these guys saying they're not even going to get half of that. <laughs> this thing is about to lose so much damn. <laughs> they say after marketing, conservatively speaking, Disney is probably 400 million in the hole. I guarantee you it ain't a conservative speaking on this marketing. They put a lot of money into selling this thing. I have seen this movie spread and splashed all over the place more than anything else from Disney this year. I have seen more Indiana Jones ads, trailers, you name it. I have seen this thing everywhere i don't know what the marketing budget of it is obviously but they have absolutely splashed this movie all over the map i've seen more indiana jones the guardians of the galaxy ant-man maybe little mermaid might be close it might be close but i mean i have seen a ton of indiana jones so the marketing there ain't no conservative marketing on this they have gone all in to try to make some money off of this movie uh yeah so 400 million dollars in the hole i'm thinking it's probably more and closer than the range of 450 maybe even five who knows uh, given that theaters generally keep around half of all money ticket sales made, yep, they're looking at about eight hundred million dollars based on four hundred million, just to break even. Just to break even, you're gonna need somewhere in the range of eight hundred million dollars, and I guarantee you, it's more than that. It's gonna be way more than that because foreign box offices and everything are tricky. You gotta really watch how much of that money you can pull away from the foreign box office. All right, but you know, if you just go off the regular rule of thumb, yeah, eight hundred million dollars. That's what they're gonna need. And there's not, there's no chance in hell. <laughs> I've told you guys before, Raiders of the Lost Ark is my number one favorite film of all time. I seem like I watch it every month or I watch snippets of it every month. I cannot get enough of that film. I love it to death. All right. More than Star Wars. Some of y'all might be surprised at that. But this film ain't going to make any money. Okay. It's not going to even get close to $800 million. It might not get close to $600 million. It all depends. And y'all can see right here, it says it too. Let's say the film does indeed do about $70 million domestically, which would be around 30% less than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. If we presume a similar decline for the film's total theatrical run, Dial of Destiny would pull in just north of $550 million worldwide. That's a damn fine sum. If this movie had a $185 million budget like its predecessor, it might even be considered a modern success. Yes, but it's not it is absolutely ridiculous i don't know why these films are costing this much to make all right it mentions that right here franchise film budgets have spiraled out of control we saw that with elemental okay elemental cost 200 million dollars like where is the 200 million dollars going to all right i mean jesus christ man these guys are laundering all kinds of money there's some crooks over there at Disney, skimming off the top and charging these but these humongous budgets to these films that absolutely don't need it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it goes on to say some of the year's biggest theatrical earners are still going to lose money, and that's something Hollywood is going to have to reckon with sooner rather than later. Indy 5 figures to be one of these movies. You got a whole laundry list of films, all right? Let, 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 let's check it out real quick. Now, you can see the top 10 films, right? We don't have the budgets or anything, but look at these top 10 films. Yeah, Mario costs like $100 million. More than made its money back. It's going to be just fine. All right. Guardians of the Galaxy cost 250 million. All right. So it cracked through. It's going to make its money back, but you know, it's not going to have a lot. It might have made, you know, like maybe 27 to 35 million dollars after all is said and done after they pay for the film and everything that they did and they split the revenue with the theaters. Yeah. It's going to get maybe about 35 for it. Hey, that's a success these days because you look at Fast X. Fast X cost over 300 million dollars. It's not going to make its money back. Now, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse at 560 it only cost 100 million 
So you pay, you make a hundred million dollar movie, you come in somewhere with a kind of maybe a finicky, you know, movie going audience right now who's like, hey, we're really not sure what we're going to throw all of our money into. There's so many options out there. You got all the streaming services. You got YouTube. You got various types of films out there in theaters. You know, not a lot of money is getting made off of the movies like they used to before the pandemic. People have discovered, hey, I can save a lot of money just staying at home, getting a streaming service. I got hours of entertainment there. So they're going to have to really think about scaling back these budgets. We've already talked about The Little Mermaid. They spent 250 bills on this. Yeesh. It's just ridiculous, man. Uh, Ant-Man and the Watch, we know that lost money. John Wick, I think John Wick had a modest, like, under $100 million budget. So John Wick's going to be fine. Transformers had a huge budget. That's going to lose out. And then Creed and then The Flash. The Flash, obviously, this is going to be one of the biggest box office flops of the year. It's probably not even going to... I would be surprised if this thing gets to $350 million. I don't think it's going to get there. Um, it's doing nothing in the domestic market. Um, a little bit better in the foreign markets, but this is definitely not enough so yeah you're talking about the way that hollywood is working now they're gonna have to retool everything that they're doing but we'll see what happens with indiana jones i'm actually curious about where it's at right now on rotten tomatoes okay so it's moved up a bit it was in the 50s for the longest time pretty much ever since the con film festival and then it started dipping into the 40s and now it sprang up into the 60s uh because they did the world premiere and a lot of the shill media came and helped this thing out uh but yeah you look at this at, with the top critics it's still sitting at 50 percent and yeah so it's not doing very well in my opinion it's going to be the lowest rated indiana jones film in terms of the uh critic score uh, let's see what some of the critics are saying it's not the best Indiana Jones movie, not by a long shot, but it may be the best performance by Ford as Indy, and it's brave and exciting for what it signifies. That may not be enough for the audience, but it was enough for me. But you only gave it a 6 out of 10. Alan, you gave it a 6.5 out of 10. That sounds like a D, a D minus, all right, in school. So yeah, I'm not sure if this thing, you seem to have liked it, but I don't know. Unfortunately, the latest Indiana Jones installment continues a Hollywood tradition of punching Nazis without doing much to explain why Nazis are bad or how you recognize them. Oh, boy. Yeah, this person is super woke and they gave it a splat. So ultimately, this is probably not going to work with the woke people either. OK, all the woke people that want to go out and watch Indiana Jones punch Nazis, they're going to be disappointed. OK, like this woke idiot was. Somewhere between the ungainly beginning and conclusion that brought me to tears, Dial of Destiny won me over for how it built upon the franchise and adds dimension to Indiana Jones. Yeah, I think, again, that Indiana Jones is a simple character. They're trying to make him complex, and it's a character that isn't going to resonate with a lot of people. It'll probably resonate with people in my age demographic and maybe a little bit older. I don't think that Indiana Jones should have been a character you let age. Like I've said before, and I'll link that video above, you got to recast him. You got to just bring him out like James Bond. He's a James Bond character. Spielberg literally wanted to make James Bond, and George Lucas came up with the idea. Hey, let's do Indiana Jones. He said, all right, bet. Let's do it. And so that's the character. And so when you try to take a James Bond character and you fast forward him all into his old age and then he's a jaded, dejected James Bond, I don't see how that makes any money. I don't see how anybody's excited about that. The Dial of Destiny subsequently hits all the notes. It's an indie film through and through. It's enjoyable in that way, but this self-seriousness casts a gloomy veil over the project as a purposeless Indiana Jones waddles from adventure to adventure. See, this is what I'm saying. This dude is old. He's haggard. He's tired. He just wants some a glass of warm milk and goes to bed, and he just doesn't want to be involved with these adventures anymore. That's what this comes off to me like throughout all the trailers. And so this guy's saying straight out, yeah, he's purposeless. Like, why do we want to go? Why would anybody want to go and see a purposeless Indiana Jones? Again, I think that un unfortunately, you know, they should have just recast. They probably should have just let the thing die back in 1989. The franchise is over. We did it. Let's go on and make new stuff, you know. But Hollywood is just creatively bankrupt. They don't have the ability to do that anymore. Anyway, folks, what do y'all think about this situation with Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny coming up, preparing to lose Disney even more money? I'm telling you, Disney losing big time is the story of 2023. It's the biggest story this year. But you guys go ahead, jump down down in the comments give me your thoughts and opinions on that thanks for watching see you next time